students they will probably join in some time yes good evening everyone fine so today is uh, a session mainly on communication system all right now uh, this is a small chapter which could probably get over in two two and a half hours fine so whatever time will be remaining we'll be doing some problem practice of some random topic maybe uh, we can take a fluids or we can take modern physics itself whatever okay so first of all we will complete this chapter and you might be aware that this is the last chapter of our this thing from centum okay so once we complete communication system then we have completed entire curriculum of your j mains okay so then we'll have some time to probably plan out uh, probably will be taking up a few chapters and solving questions on them fine and then the crash course will start once maths and chemistry syllabus also gets over fine physics revision probably you can say starts little early and i can extend the revision a lot more fine then so let us start this chapter first once this chapter gets over then we will understand what to do uh, by the time uh, maths and chemistry uh, syllabus gets over so we can plan out what to do in that period okay so let us start this chapter all of you write down the chapter's name communication system write down give me a second i think i'll reshare hmm so this is the last chapter all of you write down this chapter name communication system now communication the importance of communication i cannot uh, you know talk enough about it how important the communication is okay so first of all you know you can say most primitive form of communication might have happened between uh, probably two animals or two humans any uh, let this thing any two living entities uh, the communication could have happened like you know the food is there let us go there that sort of communication okay so suppose uh, in earlier days when the language was not uh, invented or discovered during those days people used uh, signals by using hands gestures so you can understand what the other person is talking about and that way you can probably understand it fine now this kind of communication works really well if you have to communicate a uh, gesture i have not even started the chapter okay i am just telling you importance of communication gesture uh, works very well if you have to communicate quickly and have to send some targeted input okay for example you know nowadays also Uh, communication with your device suppose you have uh, a mobile phone in which if you just wave off from your hand near your camera a screenshot will be taken automatically okay that is a gesture communication suppose you have to take screenshot and gesture communication is not enabled on your mobile phone then probably you may have to give command find out what is the keys that you will press and then the uh, then the uh, you know screenshot will be taken so you know this is most primitive form of communication gesture and now 
we have also understood the importance of gesture communication because it can be very quick and works very well if you have to communicate a very targeted uh, this thing message a short targeted input fine but then as the time uh, go went by then uh, of course uh, the communication uh, will not remain only uh, you know very very targeted input it will not be just like where is food and things like that you would like to discuss everything in detail okay then you need help of language okay so then uh, language is like an la language is like a code which you create a sound so a person in front of you understand what is the meaning of that sound so there are set of rules for every language so if you if you talk in english so if if i and you both understand the rules of the english then you will understand whatever uh, sound i am making in english you will understand what is the meaning of it fine so that is a reason why the language has evolved because it will let you communicate very very uh, you know detailed manner and describe everything in pretty much in detail fine so then language came okay now when language came language again has a long long history there are different kind of languages there are these uh, uh, languages like chinese uh, languages which have many many uh, you can say just like uh, alphabets chinese have uh, this chinese languages like you know they communicate in in form of pictures which is very primitive then uh, you have sanskrit language english language hindi language all these languages got evolved and that helped us to communicate fine so you can communicate effectively now you can communicate in detail fine so this kind of uh, thing has evolved and the limitation of you know the fact that whatever i want to communicate i can use the language and communicate exactly that okay the way i am probably i want to communicate whatever i have to say i can use the language and communicate it in a very detailed manner okay so it was a very very important thing to have language but the limitation still was uh, what if what if i want to communicate if i want to to communicate to someone communicate with with someone who is 100 kilometers away or let's say 2 kilometer away also okay so i want to communicate someone which is 100 kilometer away and i want let's say to communicate with 100 people at once and those 100 people are uh, living different different places for example you know you guys are definitely scattered in the bangalore right different different places you guys are living you're not uh, uh, there at a single place still i am able to take the class and communicate with all of you okay now how effectively i am able to communicate it also depends on how effectively you are listening to it and how many doubts you ask right so it has many factors in it but talking about just clear and simple communication point of view even though language was discovered still there were these two basic challenges okay and apart from these challenges there were you know challenges like probably uh, suppose if i want 
if I want to send, let's say, images, videos. Okay, so basically, language is fine. But using language, suppose I have to uh, describe whatever pics I have taken, I have to communicate that to someone. So if I use language to start uh, detailing the photograph I have taken, the it will be a very, very difficult thing to do. Okay, so the best thing would be sending the image as it is or sending the videos as, as it is. So there are many, many limitations. So the first limitation was, of course, the speed. How quickly you can communicate. Okay, then comes the quality of the communication. Quality included uh, whether you are able to send only text, whether you can send image also, or you can send videos as well. Okay, quality also includes how far you can communicate effectively or with how many people at max you can communicate. So there are many, many challenges. Okay, so uh, I don't know whether uh, you guys aware of it, but a uh, few years back, probably 20 to 25 years back, having a telephone was a luxury. Okay, it was not that everybody had a telephone. And even if you get an incoming call, you will also get charged for it. Those who are calling and those who are receiving both used to get charged. So we have come a long, long way with respect to how we are communicating. Okay, so you know the most primitive, uh, let's say the most, uh, you can say a systematic way of communicating with a strategic arrangement, it is documented with uh, how Akbar has done the communication. So when Akbar used to fight for uh, wars, of course, most of the time these guys will be fighting wars only during those times, uh, the wars was happening every now and then. So Akbar used to spend most of the time outside, let's say uh, 10 kilometers away from his, uh, let's say wh wherever he used to reside. So when his wife was about to deliver a child, Akbar wanted to know whether it is a boy or a girl. Okay. So what Birbal did, he had arranged a set of drummers. Okay. Maybe let's say uh, after every 20 to 30 meters, there were drummers and depending on how the drum beats are there, Akbar will understand whether it is a boy or a girl. So first drummer will beat in one way, then that will be heard by the second one, third one, fourth one, like that, the beats will reach to the Akbar. So like that, Akbar will know. Now, Akbar only wanted to know whether it is a boy or a girl, because Akbar knew that he can't discuss anything else. He can't use drum beats to communicate with, uh, with probably his wife and ask, okay, how is the health? How much is the weight of the kid? And, uh, you know, so many, many other things that uh, who all are there, is, is everyone happy and all that. He can't use drummers to communicate all that in detail. So, of course, you can understand Akbar during that time was a very, very uh, prominent figure. Even he was struggling and he could only get to know whether it's a boy or a girl by using some code messages, fine. So communication has always been a challenge whether you are a rich person or a poor person, okay? So it has become, it uh, during that time, it had become a basic requirement, okay? Basic need it had become. And I'm talking about, let's say, uh, I'm talking about what? I'm talking about these, uh, whatever example I've taken, I'm talking about the informal one, okay? Suppose you have wars, okay? War is happening between the two countries, all right? Then the army has to communicate to the base station, right? As in how many soldiers have, how many soldiers lost their life? How many are, uh, let's say, injured? 
uh, and uh, how much food is left what what all things they need whether they need uh, some more doctors to cater to everybody so all that communication has to be done and then when when the war is happening they also exchange lot of strategic input by using uh, a communication system only now when they use communication system to uh, to exchange this confidential information then it has to be very very uh, let's say uh, very very properly it should be encrypted and then it should be a very very secure line of communication otherwise there is always a chance that your enemy will intercept your communication and decrypt and all those things your uh, your enemy can do and will understand okay how many ships are coming now or from which side your army is and how they are traveling what is the plan and everything will be you know if they if you intercept the communication itself so you might not don't know that when cold war was happening between russia and uh, uh, the america not russia ussr okay when soviet union was there so lot of people were employed only to intercept the communication and understand what is the communication going on because when you have a confidential information you will not use english to communicate you will create some some strange kind of way to communicate okay so uh, just a simple this thing will be you will call like ba basic you will be saying like this you will write in reverse this is a very very in a, you know very very simple way of encrypting this is also basic need only if you understand how what i mean okay then every word if i reverse you will know that it is written in reverse order you will decrypt it and you will understand what is the communication going on so lot of things uh, went by to make sure that communication is proper the system which you put the communication system you put is as per the requirement and as per whatever is suited for that this thing and uh, you know most of the development that happened in the communication has happened uh, in past you can say 30 to 40 years only so just go back a little bit uh, let's say 20 30 years back people used to have pager pager is a short sms which you can send then you then people were using the uh, landline phone then comes the uh, cordless phone then comes the mobile phone then you have satellite phones so and then you have maybe uh, you have this uh, uh, dish antennas wherein you can catch the signal and you can broadcast a single thing suppose i have to broadcast an important message let's say modi has to do man ki baat right chai pe charcha and whatever he does he will be using radio station or he will be uh, broadcasting his message and you can see that uh, entire country get that message at once so that is uh, you know that is because of some communication system only so communication system is a very very important part and it is much needed you can imagine how quickly you know in in our time we uh, in our time as in when i was in let's say i, I was doing my first and second year of engineering we used to think that email is a luxury when gmail came you cannot make gmail ids without invitations so we have to search for okay who has the invite and get the invitation for the gmail id and we used to think that it's a one of the greatest thing having an email id and you can communicate using emails you can you can maximum at max you can attach maybe 1 mb file or 2 mb file so more than that you can't attach so but then also we used to write emails whatever it is maybe a formal email a informal talks between the two friends whatever it is the email was a very very uh, popular thing and then came the uh, you know some messenger chat messengers uh, like for example you have used to have google talk i don't know whether you know it or not then you have yahoo messengers so people used to uh, communicate using that and then now whatsapp has come whatsapp has uh, completely eliminated the need of sms 
it has uh, 90% of email traffic probably went down because of the whatsapp itself you can send an entire file video images instantly by using whatsapp and it is free also on top of it so nobody would like to send sms nobody would like to send email just for a you know informal this thing so you no know, whatever invention related to communication happens the the world will accept it from both hands and embrace it and your invention will suddenly become hit uh, because it is a basic need we are a social animal we want to communicate okay that is one of the reasons for our existence <laughs> if i put it bluntly okay so that is the reason why we are studying this chapter communication system i am not talking about a system which akbar and birbal has put in i am talking about a modern day system which is of course technical and uh, it is you can say it's a technology chapter just like em wave it's also a technology chapter just like semiconductor okay and these chapters you will always feel that the knowledge is incomplete it is i mean suddenly i'll tell you assume this thing is there okay then unfortunately we will not be able to get into the details okay because these are just introduction introduction to communication system that's all imagine the way you have learned uh, probably laws of motion chapter in class 9th okay it is like that only you are learning communication system right now and then you will learn the same topic in much more greater detail when you take Uh, you know electronics and communication as as your major in your engineering okay right now it is just a basic introduction like uh, you know what all things should be there in a system which is used to communicate from one point to the other point what are the basic problems what are the basic solutions that's all okay is it chapter done in your school no sir no okay hmm so i'll move forward so first thing is we will be talking about what was the basic this chapter is deleted in your school for board exam it is deleted right have you checked that all of you only vikas has checked that nobody else okay but we we don't know we don't know whether this will be eliminated from your uh, je curriculum okay so we will be going ahead as it is do you know that they have removed laws of motion chapter from class 11th you may not know they have removed first law of motion second law of motion third law of motion can you imagine learning physics without that okay when what have they removed that what like for je je see they are assuming that you already know since you have studied in class 9th okay so that is a very you can say sad thing but then yes uh, they have removed couple of uh, chapters in class 10th also they have they have they have reduced the class 10th curriculum by 30% and you know it is already so less anyways it is not good rahul mishra don't think this chapter is in my textbook your textbook is probably old all right write down elements of communication system write down it was not there when i was studying class 12th the chapter was not there in my textbook also and it will be good if it if it is removed because many things you need to assume to study this chapter so i think in the new one only they've removed it because I, like there's only 14 chapters in the latest one i checked 
latest one how do you know it is latest i check the online textbook also that's why just to confirm tu yahi karta rehta hai class mein you you don't pay attention no so i just checked right now sorry pay attention here we never know whether it is included in j mains or not so anyway it will take 2 hours all right pay attention here so we are talking about elements of communication system how will you communicate let's say you have a mobile phone okay and you are communicating with someone at some other part of the city and you are calling them and communicating okay so you have created some sound okay that sound has to be communicated like for example i am communicating with you right i am creating sound all right so sound is there near my mouth this sound is captured by someone some system and this sound is getting transmitted to your system and you are able to hear it is not that you are able to hear my sound directly isn't it it is not that i am shouting from here and you are able to listen to me directly but you are listening to me as if i am talking very near to you that is possible only because of communication system fine so there will be definitely one information source which is like you are the information source fine so write down information source let's take an example of myself i am the information source communicating to you okay over here then this particular thing this will create a message and it will go to the another module which is transmitter okay this is transmitter so in between what happens is you have a message that got converted into some sort of electrical signal so whatever i am speaking the sound when it is coming it goes inside the microphone the sound goes in the microphone the microphone converts my sound into an electrical signal maybe voltage fluctuation or the current fluctuation and this voltage and current fluctuation is fed to the transmitter okay now this transmitter will then transmit whatever signal is there message signal further okay it will use a channel write down there is a channel for example when i am communicating with you the channel is pretty wide for example uh, my voice goes into the transmitter transmitter uses uh, internet connection it is my uh, you can say wire is the channel right now and then uh, in between there will be a wireless transmitter transmission between the router and my laptop so there is a wireless channel as well so wired channel then wireless channel then it goes to uh, another server using wire and then goes to your uh, router from there it goes to your laptop by using wireless channel so this is a medium you can say okay so transmitter takes the message signal processes it uses the channel and then it get transmitted to the receiver
okay now receiver is not the person it is some device it is called transmitter and receiver are two devices then you have other person on that side you can call that as user of the information okay now where is the communication system communication system is this inside the red box this is my communication system transmitter channel and receiver is my communication system okay now things are not uh, very very simple the way it appears there will be noise okay the channel every channel we you use there will be some noise signal that will get introduced and this noise is very tricky to handle fine this is the communication system everybody understood yes sir okay now this is the communication system which is under study for today now uh, we are going to study about the communication system when we will be studying it we will be using some terminology to understand it for example when we are learning about the motion of an object we first understand what do we mean by displacement what do we mean by the uh, velocity acceleration angular velocity and things like that okay so similarly when we are learning about the communication system we need to learn about the basic terminology which we can use to understand the communication system okay so one by one we'll list down all of that write down basic terminology good thing is that this chapter is very theoretical so if you understand everything and remember you will definitely score in the exam okay the first one is transducer any guess is what is transducer have you heard of it before have you heard of transducer before what does it do anyone have you heard of transducer yes or no no sir no sir never that is strange ruchir has heard what it is ruchir saying Kritika, what it is? Like, I don't know what it is, but I know it's using like mics and earphones. Okay, okay. Hmm. So a transducer is a device that converts. Write down. It converts. It's a good chapter for general knowledge also. Okay. So you will learn many new things. So transducer converts. one form of energy into another form of energy this is the general transducer okay then over here i am interested in electrical transducer electrical transducer
it converts physical variables like pressure pressure displacement velocity temperature whatever it is okay into corresponding electrical signal as an output so basically it is it can be used very well as mic okay so what happens is suppose i am speaking you know when i speak i create a sound so near by uh, mouth the let's say the particle starts oscillating it's a sound wave okay i am drawing it like a transverse wave but in reality it is a longitudinal but anyways it shows that there is a wave so there is an there is a particle oscillation that happens near my uh, mouth and if i put a, a mic near my uh, mouth wherever the sound is then the mic will take this pressure variation which is your sound wave is a pressure variation nothing else okay so transducer will create one electrical output corresponding to your sound so this is the sound and corresponding to this sound you have this electrical output so you have converted your sound into electrical it may be voltage fluctuation could be voltage could be current could be anything okay and there is one one on to mapping so from here to here it is a unique mapping so any point in time you can convert electrical to back to you can get the sound from electrical if there is a one one on to mapping so one particular sound signature correspond to one particular electrical signature so you can easily take get back the sound also from the same electrical signal which got generated so it will be very very similar okay so i hope everybody understood transducer it is probably one of the most important uh, component in the uh, communication system and they are of many varieties you might have seen already that uh, mic the cost of the mic can be as cheap as 30 rupees it can go up to lakhs also okay so the quality of mic it can be improved much much more uh, higher okay so yeah different different varieties are there but the basic thing is this only second write down signal you keep hearing about you know signal is weak signal is good and all that signal is nothing but it is the information write down it is the information that is converted into electrical signal sorry electrical form form okay that is suitable for transmission it can be analog or digital don't worry about what is analog what is digital um, you know we will we we'll probably have a discussion little later on it but not required as such so this is signal okay so basically the micro 
phone creates a signal this one you can say this is signal okay but then you know you can say this is signal but probably this is not suitable for transmission then uh, you know it is better not to call it as a signal if it requires further processing before the uh, you know my what microphone will do it will convert the sound into electrical form exactly the way it is but then still it may not be suitable for the transmission you may have to increase its frequency uh, do some processing on that then only it is suitable for the transmission so once it becomes suitable to transmit then it is called signal okay but then uh, if you're talking about a very short transmission for example your mic is directly connected to your mobile phone and you're recording your voice then processing is not required okay so whatever it is you un understand right what is the signal next one is noise can anyone try to uh, probably explain what is a noise everyone so it's undesirable uh, information does it need to be electrical form when i say noise is it an electrical form or not so i think it's just when the signal gets distorted no no you i'm asking you it is electrical or a sound itself can be said as a noise so a sound itself it is electrical okay so for example uh, let's say you're talking on a mobile phone to some with some uh, and with someone so from background the truck moves fine then the noise of the truck got captured on your mic all right then mic will convert that the, that sound of the truck into electrical form also the your mic will not differentiate between sound of the truck and what you are talking so both of them will get converted into some sort of signal and will be transmitted to the person when the person it reaches to the person the electrical signal that reaches person has the uh, has the sound uh, of the truck also as an in the electrical form okay so if you have some mechanism probably if you can uh, you know probably create a dampener or you have a very special mic which will not catch the sound coming from one of the directional directional mic suppose you have so you even though the truck is having lot of sound if your mic doesn't catches it then it is not a noise fine so noise is electrical in nature and and of course our day to day life we will definitely call uh, the sound also as a noise but technically noise is a signal only which is electrical but it is unwanted unwanted signal unwanted signal that tend to disturb the transmission and processing of message signal there are different different ways in which you can cancel out noise okay so we'll uh, no need to get into detail of that so okay let me tell you one suppose this is your mobile phone you are speaking from this side the truck is moving it creates a sound sound will get captured over here 
you can have a microphone over there also which will also capture the sound of your sound of the truck sound of a truck this mic also captures this mic also captures but this mic will capture your sound very clearly this this mic and that mic both the mic will capture the sound of the truck almost similar intensity so you can subtract this wave sorry you can subtract this wave from that signal so noise can be eliminated if you if you can use two mics but then i am telling you in a very crude manner okay of course there will be some algorithm that will be running wherein uh, you need to also identify that you are not cancelling out probably when you are speaking some of the sound is captured over this mic also when you subtract your sound will also get cancelled away so it's a very tricky matter wherein you eliminate the noise okay a lot of work is going on in that area then the fourth write down is transmitter a transmitter write down a transmitter processes the incoming signal to make it suitable for transmission okay suppose you you want to basically you know there is a difference between transmitter and a loud speaker there is a big big difference a loud speaker will convert your sound into electrical signal amplify it and then again convert into sound so that is the loud speaker it doesn't processes your uh, signal because it doesn't have to transmit it to the longer distance fine that is a loud speaker transmitter when it receives the electrical signal corresponding to your voice it has to do lot of processing imagine uh, you are speaking with someone and there is another person who is speaking with someone else and both of you uh, have converted your uh, sound into electrical signal using mic and then you have thrown that in air so that uh, some station will catch it and send it to your uh, wherever it has to go okay now imagine in the air there are so many uh, messages they will undergo interference these messages will interfere with each other and create lot of problem okay so you need to process it so that you know every message should have an information of every data packet that you throw in the air should have an information of who is sending the data where it should go and on top of it there are lot of other things that you need to do before it is suitable to be thrown in air like that okay so this is a transmitter we'll be talking about what kind of processing it does in this chapter itself then you have receiver as the name suggest receiver receiver will receive the information from the transmitter and extracts extract the message signal what is the message signal this is the message signal uh, this one this is the message signal after you process it things will change this signal may look like like that you know after you do the processing it will look very weird something like this it will look 
okay so this is how after processing from the transmitter the same message signal will look like this so receiver will extract this from whatever it has received after processing okay it extracts the message signal from the from the processed signal whatever signal it has received from the transmitter okay signal given by the transmitter anyone has any doubt till now everything is clear or any doubt no doubts okay Raju, any doubt? No, sir. KTG. KTG. No, sir. No, sir. Akshat. Akshat. Can't hear you. Can any, can anyone else hear Akshat? No, sir. No, no Akshit, you are not audible. Speak a bit loud. Can you hear now? Ah. I changed okay. my mind. No doubts. No doubts. Okay. Fine. Pradhyat, you have put your photograph of your teeth as your DP in the Zoom? Yes, sir. It's like this for a while. <laughs> Such big teeth you have. Oh, no, sir. This is... Uh, this is part of a picture that I applied to fill it out. Okay, your voice is breaking. Anyways, leave it. Right now, the next technical term is attenuation. Have you heard of this term, attenuation? Sir, in com. In computer science, you've heard of it. Good. Attenuation is basically loss of the strength of the signal. While propagating through the medium. Okay, so this attenuation could happen. For, uh, for example, if let's say you might have seen that uh, Wi-Fi router, if it is very far from where you are sitting, then uh, you may not be able to catch the uh, Wi-Fi signals because a lot of attenuation has happened uh, between you and the wire, uh, wireless transmitter. So in between there are walls coming in, then a uh, lot of metallic objects are there which will absorb every of these kind of objects and substance will come in between you and the wireless transmitter. They will keep on absorbing the signal and attenuation will keep on happening. So if you go very far from the wireless router, the signal will be zero. Okay, that's the reason. So you don't want a lot of attenuation to happen. Otherwise, the strength will not be good. A lot of noise will be there. Huh. Right on amplification. Can anyone tell me what is the definition of amplification? Just whatever you may, you, you think it is. So by like raising it by some factor. What, what are you raising? The signal. That's a very broad thing. Signal has many things. The amplitude. Uh, the amplitude. The... Amplitude. Okay. So write down process. Process to increase the amplitude.
Param is there? Naya, amplitude of a signal. Okay, this is a process. Amplification is a process to increase the amplitude of a signal and it is used it is used to compensate attenuation your television has an amplifier without amplifier your television will get a very weak signal you will not be able to recognize also okay so it's a very important process amplification for every uh, communication write down range it is the largest distance between source and destination up to which the signal with sufficient strength is there Now sufficient strength is a subjective term. So that is a range also will be, you know, like 20 to 30 meters, 30 to 50 meters like that. They will give you range. Fine. So this is the range. Then one more uh, term you will keep on hearing is bandwidth. Do you know what is the definition of bandwidth? Anyone? This is the rate of transfer. Of the message others if bandwidth is high of course the speed will be higher but anyone has any other definition speed of transmission you know is the speed of light okay but then also mm -hmm. you have lesser this thing uh, lesser speed okay why The reason is uh, because of the bandwidth issue and bandwidth is nothing but the frequency range. Frequency range over which communication happens. If frequency range is narrow, then your data packets which you send in this space, suppose you can use only uh, 1 to 10 hertz, okay? Then first this data packet will go, then this data packet will go, then that pack data packet will go. All the data packets will be using entire spectrum of the frequency. But if suppose you have 1 to 10,000 hertz frequency, then first data packet will use 1 to 10 hertz, second data packet will use 11 to 20 hertz, third will use 21 to 30 hertz. So that way multiple data can be transmitted at a single time. So automatically your speed will increase. Fine. You don't have to create a queue. So this is the bandwidth. Then you have modulation. Write down. Have you heard of modulation in computer science? Yes, sir. it's part of yes, modem. Uh, what it is? What what does it mean? Modulation. Modulating means what? Changing it according to the need, maybe. Okay, you don't know. They haven't discussed it in computer science. So they just discuss modem, like which demodulates and demodulates the signal. They didn't like go into depth about modulation. But the definition should be told initially what it is. Anyways, leave it. So this is 
the modulation is when the message signal message signals frequency you increase by superposing superposing a high frequency carrier wave okay this is called modulation so the frequency of the message when you are speaking when the transducer converts it into a message signal the frequency is very less that is not suitable for transmission there are many reasons we'll come to know later on so you need to increase its frequency before it get transmitted so modulation is that process in which you increase the frequency Eleventh, a lot of technical terms. There is one more, then that's it. Write down demodulation. Any guesses? What it should be? Modulation it decreases is, frequency. Decreases frequency, yeah. Huh? <laughs> okay. What? Well, any? Any other? Any other? Do you think of? So it, it's a back wave that you added in the beginning, the carrier wave. Okay, I think I understood what you said, but your voice was breaking. So it is a process of retrieval, retrieval of information from the carrier wave. Okay, what is a what carrier wave did when you superpose a carrier wave? The frequency went up. Then the signal has changed. It will look like this. I'll show you. I have drawn here. After putting a carrier wave, it looks like this. Bottom right looks like this. This is your uh, modified signal. Then demodulation is a process to get this. From whatever I was transmitted, fine. This is what demodulation is. Okay, the last, the last technical term which you should know is a repeater. Have you heard of repeater? In uh, computer yes, science, yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? So it's like to recapture the signal after a certain distance. Recapture can be done by your mobile phone also. Mobile phone captures a signal or not? What is the basic function of repeater? What does it do? It amplifies the signal again. That is amplifier. Repeater doesn't amplify the signal. So just make sure the signal doesn't die out. Hmm. Something like that it does. It increases the range. It increases the range of the. Suppose uh, your Wi-Fi, it is there in the uh, drawing room. It is not able to reach to one of the bedrooms. You can have a repeater in between, which will capture the. Signal and retransmit it. Okay, so a repeater is a combination of receiver and transmitter both. It has both receiver as well as transmitter because it has to first receive and then transmit it back. Okay, so it is a combination of Combination of receiver and transmitter.
okay, to be used to increase the range. Okay, so these are all the technical terms. I'll just show you uh, the ex one of the examples. You you gave a very a small example of the repeater. I am telling you uh, in reality, repeater is used everywhere. Have you seen a, a you know a tower on a mountain? Have you ever seen a tower on a mountain? Okay, have you seen a mountain? Yes, yes. Tower on a mountain? No. Yes, sir. Okay, so typically, yes. uh, you know, a repeater is placed on top of the mountain. You want the height of a repeater to be bigger. Then it is used in a best way. This is a repeater, let's say, you have a tower. Let's say Kanya Tower. Here are tomorrow tower. Okay. This is a tower. And here is another tower. Now, because of the curvature of the earth, this tower cannot interact with that tower. In between, earth is coming. You can see this. Fine. So, what you can do is you can use a repeater, you can communicate with this. And this will take the message and transmit it here. So you have increased the range. Earlier, you were not able to reach to this tower. Now you are able to reach it by using a repeater. Okay, so it's not only for the Wi Fi. Okay, let me draw the tower nicely. So isn't this what a satellite does? Satellite, you know, di different frequency satellite operates. If you have a satellite, you don't need repeater. Okay, I'm talking about uh, the uh, different kind of communication where you are using the, uh, you can say, a ground wave or satellite has a different set of frequency. Just understand that. Good. And you can, you know, using transmitter and receiver, as in repeater, you can increase the range quite a bit. Suppose you have such big, big antennas on top of the mountain, you can effectively communicate anywhere on the earth. Okay, you can communicate like that. Now, what Roger said, you can use the satellite also. Yes, you can use it. Why not? Even satellite, you can say it is kind of, uh, you know, repeater itself. If you are using it like that. Okay. So, this is one of the common example of the repeater. Fine. Now, uh, I think I should have discussed it at the start. I have shared a set of result that uh, these guys got your one year senior have you noticed any uh, anything anything to highlight there have you noticed that anything the second attempt doesn't increase <laughs> good do you do you know how much time they got in the second attempt do you have an idea because of the covid the second attempt happened in the september end so how much time they got after the board exam got over can you count it and tell me quickly like six months. Six months of nothing else but preparation of J-Mains. Nothing else. They don't have anything to worry. But then also, second attempt, their percentile went down. Do you know their scores went up? Most of their scores went up by 20 marks, 23 marks, like that. But the percentile fell. The reason? Everybody else was better prepared. Okay, because they don't, uh, many of them, they don't care much about the board exam. So when you prepare for a board exam, they will also be preparing for J mains only. And uh, it is sad to say, but then yes, it is difficult to match the kind of hard work they are doing. You know, they will be giving everything they have. 
they'll be working day in day out sometime they forget that they have to sleep they'll just keep on solving question and then uh, from night uh, sunlight comes this is night out usually that that is what they do and uh, that's the reason why i say that for bangalore kids you should not you should never never ever count on your second attempt okay first attempt is your best chance because everybody else also will be like waking up only that oh it is a first attempt uh, we have one more attempt like that they'll be taking it lightly all of them second attempt they'll give everything they have because they you know that is the last chance they have so better to strike when everybody else is not very serious fine so and then you have seen uh, i have shared 14 people's percentile okay out of those 14 people only two of them increased and their increase in percentile is just 0.14 or 0.2 percentile like that it was not a big recovery and almost everyone's percentile fell everyone including bharat sukir everyone's percentile fell okay so understand that your first attempt is everything you have second attempt no matter how well prepared you are you bound to get lower percentile okay give your best shot in the first anyways so this is these are the technical terms now we will be discussing few things for example uh, let's talk about the bandwidth i have a doubt ha ah, bol so is there anything that decreases the amplitude of the signal like amplification attenuation okay amplification is to compensate attenuation right yes sir okay bandwidth bandwidth of signals see uh we will be using digital signals to communicate most of the time okay it will create a square wave form all right and when you are using the multiple uh multiple signals let's say you are using sinusoidal signals all right then if multiple multiple frequencies they superpose they are going to create a square wave sort of thing i'll just give you one example let's say this is there is a square wave let's say this is a wave okay now let's say i mark these points 0 0.5 and 1 okay if i have a frequency which is this on to this let's say this frequency is mu not on to this if i add two mu not frequency two mu not frequency how does it look like it will look like this two mu not frequency with the same amplitude will look like this all of you understand this yeah this is how it look like and when it superpose if it superpose then it will look like that let me use the red one
once it gets superposed both the frequencies you can just add graphically you will see that you'll get this kind of thing okay on top of it if you add 3 mu naught okay then you're going to get this kind of thing so you'll see that if i keep on adding higher and higher frequency it is becoming closer to the square wave only fine so basically a square wave can be thought of as a collection of multiple frequencies fine and higher frequency higher frequency contribution do you think it is lesser or higher higher frequency contribution to the square wave formation what do you think the contribution of 3 mu naught in the shape of a square wave is higher than mu naught or lesser than mu naught will be higher higher kaise ho gaya lesser hai na the, the shape no 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 the shape is pretty well defined by the white line itself the the 2 mu not has refined it only then 3 mu not has further refined it but the shape was defined by the white line itself do you all agree yes sir so contribution of higher frequency is lesser higher frequency contribution is lesser okay so that's the reason why if you are transmitting a square wave in a digital form then we need higher bandwidth we need higher bandwidth so that we don't lose out on the message because you know from mu not to 2 mu not anyway there is no frequency between mu not and 2 mu not that will give a square wave so if i if i transmit a square wave they will be able to extract mu not 2 mu not 3 mu not 4 mu not like that okay but my bandwidth is just 0 to let's say 100 hertz my mu not is let's say a, a let's say 50 then i'll have 50 and 100 only two frequencies i can have if i use a square wave like this okay but if i have 0 to 1000 hertz then i can have uh, 50 100 150 200 250 300 i can have multiple frequencies to play with okay so that is one simple reason why uh, having a bigger bandwidth is a desired way to increase the communication in a better manner okay now talking about the bandwidth of the signals there there is this international telecommunication union which has defined for what purpose what should be the range of frequency that you should use okay you cannot randomly say that okay fine i'll use gamma rays for my radio communication all right it will disrupt everything and if you do that it will be illegal fine so that is the reason why there is a very very well defined standard that everybody has to follow and uh, you know there there is also bidding that used to happen for example the go government decides that let's say uh, between uh, 10 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz this frequency will be used for communication so probably airtel and vodafone will come and say that airtel will say that i will take bandwidth of 10 kilohertz to 60 kilohertz and i'll be paying this much okay then vodafone will bid for another uh, set of bandwidth so like this people, uh, you know it is a very well regulated thing wherein you have to pay money to the government also 
to use a particular bandwidth spectrum sale yes and that is where the all the corruption you have heard have you heard of 2g yes, 2g yes, scam 2g scam <laughs> anyways that is what it is rahul mishra mute yourself write down so there is this uh, union it is called the international telecommunication union write down the short form is itu okay so i'll just list down the set of frequencies that are used for various purposes you don't need to mug it up it is just for your information sake okay am broadcast have you heard of am broadcast Yes. Have, you have you heard of all india radio no yes yes, yes. right so am broadcast is that okay and all india radio runs on it it can travel to very very far distances okay so the frequency for that is 540 to 1600 kilohertz Okay. Can you quickly calculate the wavelength for six hundred, six hundred kilohertz frequency? How much is the wavelength? So five hundred. What five hundred meters? Five hundred meters, all of you. Yes, sir. So you can imagine how big the wavelength is typically for an EM wave because the speed is very high. Okay, and just so that you know that the size of the antenna, size of the antenna is close to. lambda by 4 if suppose you are having a certain frequency that you are using the antenna used to catch that signal should have a size of lambda by 4 roughly because the natural frequency of the structure has to match with the frequency of the uh, this thing so that's that is where all that calculation come in roughly lambda by 4 should be the size of the antenna so imagine 125 meters size of the antenna okay it will be a huge huge antenna so it is practically impossible to have this much size so that is one of the reasons why the message signals frequency is increased by doing modulation you modulate it increase its frequency okay fine and that is the reason why uh we do that so that the wavelength decreases and the size of the antenna requirement goes down otherwise the kind of frequencies you are using for mobile communication if modulation is not done you will require a size of let's say uh 10 to 20 meters big antenna should be there in every mobile phone so you can imagine your antenna of mobile phone in order to carry that you need a truck fine so that is one of the primary reasons why we need to increase the frequency uh, using the modulation okay anyways next is fm broadcast have you heard of fm yes sir 
do you guys use fm like you guys listen to it so only in the car okay yeah. that's it so you are uh, you the monitor would have the no 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 not not that yeah once you capture it it is then you can process it you don't need an antenna to process it then okay yeah so uh, anyways so fm broadcast frequency is roughly 88 to 108 megahertz now whose bandwidth is higher am or fm whose bandwidth is higher fm not am okay there is 10 to the power 6 here this is 10 to the power 3 kilo is 10 to the power 3 okay fm is higher fine next is television television typically usage is 54 to 890 megahertz have you seen cordless phone by the way cordless phone yes sir i have it yes sir still have you have it okay yes sir <laughs> okay so you know cordless phone the frequency it uses is close to am broadcast frequency so if you use cordless phone you can try it if you have a radio that old radio if you have it i don't know whether you have it this old radio if you can rotate the knob probably on your uh, any digital radio also it will be fine if you rotate the knob you are using the cordless phone it is emitting signals it will it is receiving and transmitting so your radio will be able to catch the signal of the cordless phone because the frequency is matching here and whatever you are talking whatever you are receiving everything can be heard using a radio okay so it can be easily intercepted very very easy it is so cordless phone if it is a secret talk you should avoid anyways next is cellular mobile phone cellular mobile frequency is 896 to 935 megahertz typical typical frequency range okay so you can see that cellular mobile phone is safer none of the other instruments will be tuned to catch this much frequency then you have satellite communication have you seen in the war movies the uh, sometimes soldiers will be Uh, carrying uh, on their back a big antenna device and uh, they will try to catch a signal have you seen something like that on the war movies right that they are trying to do satellite communication they will first uh, have a communication with the satellite and then satellite will connect them to uh, whatever this thing that happens at 5.9 around to roughly 6.4 gigahertz very high frequency fine so these are the ranges and everybody has agreed that this is what is the appropriate range okay and yes sometime people debate that uh, you know that uh, lot of cellular tower should not be there where the you no know, intensity of the cellular uh, towers frequency should not be very high because it is harmful for the humans so a lot of research is going on people are debating whether it is harmful or not people are also debating whether the wifi signal that is there inside your house whether that is harmful for uh, for for humans or especially for the kids okay so they say that uh, always uh, you can put your mobile phone on the uh, on the flight mode when you are sleeping don't put it near your uh, head all that thing is very much prevalent uh, for the health reasons otherwise it can create health hazards people say that it can slowly and slowly 
it can develop a tumor in your brain also if you put it near your head continuously for so many years and uh, that is the reason why you know uh, although still people are debating on it but i would say that you can play safer always put your mobile phone in a flight mode because near the antenna uh, of your mobile phone the signal will have the highest strength okay it is trying to catch it anyways so this is the brief discussion on the technical terms bandwidth of signals and which bandwidth to use when fine so so what is the full form of am and fm 